What's up, everybody? This is Roxy, your fire wife, lawyer, mom. And today we're going to be going through part two of homeschool organization and systems. And I'm so, so excited to share with you part two. Uh, if you did not watch part one of my videos on homeschooling organization, please stay, please watch that. I will be linking it in the description box below, but it is uh, my process of how I went through planning my first ever homeschool year. We are very excited. Um, a couple of you guys have asked me why I am the fire wife lawyer mom. And the reason why is because I am a firefighter's wife. I am also a lawyer and I, my most important uh, vocation is motherhood. And so uh, I am the fire wife lawyer mom. It's a little nickname that I created. And so uh, uh, some of you guys were asking why. So uh, my husband does work uh, uh, quite, you know, crazy hours being a first responder. And uh, I'm also a full-time attorney. So it, it does take a, a lot of diligence, organization, efficiency, um, and time management to do what I do and wear the hats that I wear. So I want to impart that knowledge and my experience to all of you so that you guys can be more productive in your lives as well. A lot of people always ask me how I am able to do all that I do, and it is because of my time management skills. I am quite a ninja in that respect. So we're going to be continuing on with our homeschool organization. Again, just to let you guys know, I have looked into pretty much every homeschool mom blog, every homeschool YouTube video that you could find on the planet because I am one of those big research guru people and I have compiled what I believe is the best and most efficient way to organize your homeschool and to let your homeschool run on autopilot which is amazing especially if you guys are out there and you're thinking about homeschooling and you don't know what this whole coronavirus is going to do whether it's going to make you do distance learning or not um, this is a great alternative a great backup plan for you guys to use now I have two girls one of them is going into third grade the other one is going into kindergarten okay but it regardless of what age they are in these systems that I have created are going to do a great job in helping you plan your whether it be first homeschool year or your 15th homeschool year all right so um let's begin so just to recap the first video that I did uh my systems include a homeschool binder where I plan my entire year in advance. And if you watch the previous video, you'll see what's inside that homeschool binder, which is right there. Um, and the, this has my year schedule, my course of study, which is all of the curriculum that I'll be using for the year. Uh, I separate my curriculum into four sections. Uh, curriculum for one child, curriculum for the other child, family subjects, and circle time. Now, circle time is what we would consider, like other people call it morning basket. I call it circle time because I still have a daughter that's in kindergarten and we'd still do a circle time, but that's an hour long and I take that time to do so many different subjects and I'm going to do separate videos on those as well. I included also in my homeschool planner is my year at a glance, which is this sheet right here which has every single thing I'm going to be doing for my homeschool year divided into subjects beautifully organized I have Excel sheets uh, that this is these are not my forms these are from Megan Phillips who is a, an amazing homeschooling mom who has a blog and I will link those forms I also linked it in part one of my video but I also have my yearly calendar I also have the table of contents in this binder of all of the workbooks that my children will be using they are in those table the table of contents have been ripped out yes please forgive me but I rip out workbooks okay and that's because you know I can't have all this clutter so I ripped them out I put them in sheet protectors and they're all in that binder right there okay and then I showed you guys my crate system how I organize the kids worksheets so when I tear all of those workbooks out I file them into the appropriate weeks and it's all in one box so all of this that you see right here is Everything that I use to homeschool minus the textbooks and the box of crate systems because I didn't feel like lifting that heavy thing. And then I also use my Erin Condren planner. This is where I get into the meat and potatoes of homeschooling, where I put in the details of what exactly I do. So my year at a glance is just a glance. It's just 
what lesson I'm going to be teaching, uh, what I'm going to be doing, and then the details and all of the planning goes in that binder, in that in that planner, and I'm going to be showing you that as well. Okay, so this video is going to now go into, we've basically in our part one looked at the overall big picture of the homeschool year, and now we're going to get into the nitty gritty of the week, how I plan the month, how I plan the week, um, what I do for circle time, and I'm going to also show you these two binders right back here, which are my kids' binders. Yes, they have their own homeschool binder, and then right here I have my... Um, Right there are the workbooks, uh, the work boxes rather, okay? And these are amazing. I'm going to link everything that I'm showing you in the description box, so do not worry. Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera and show you guys first what I actually do we, you know, every single week to plan my homeschool year. So what my plan is, is at the end of the month, the last week of the month, I will then do this process to plan for the following month. So I'd like to plan only four weeks ahead of time because again, I don't wanna to plan too far in advance. I already have my overall plan, but I don't wanna do the nitty gritty uh, too far in advance for too many weeks because again, life happens. We you know, have children that are sick. We are in a coronavirus pandemic. God knows what's gonna happen next, folks. So I only wanna do four weeks at a time. All right, so let me turn the video over to how I go ahead and plan. Okay, everyone, so what do I do the week before the next month starts? All right, so what I do is, is very, very simple, and I'm gonna try to not make this very long. So I take, I have four years at a glance. Like I said, I divide my homeschool year into four sections. Curriculum for each child, child one, child two, family subjects, and circle time. So circle time, I do what's called a loop schedule where I uh, go over um, different subjects on a loop basis. Uh, Mondays, we do a certain subject, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and so on. Um, and so I cover a lot of different things that uh, I could cover in that one hour. And I do about 30 minutes um, uh, of that. And then I do another 30 minutes of uh, weather and calendar and announcements and holidays and different kinds of seasonal things um, and I'm going to do a separate video on circle time because I, I think I've come up with a fabulous circle time plan and I and it's just a great time I've, we've already been doing it as of the coronavirus pandemic and the shutdowns we were doing circle time because my daughter really wanted circle time in at home and it wasn't enough to do it on a distance basis so I actually created a circle time myself and it has become a staple in our home even when there's no school the kids want circle time so it's really really fun so what I do is I first take the sheets that correspond with the core curriculum of each of my kids. So that would be right here, okay? And I'll do separate videos on my core curriculum. Uh, I've already done one on what books I use, but this is how I divide the core curriculum of each child. I'm trying to get it up so that you could see. So I do morning work. So we do a morning worksheet every day just to get the mind moving and warmed up. We do logic and critical thinking. That is so, so important for kids to learn how to learn, how to think. We do handwriting, language arts, reading and phonics, spelling, writing, and math. That is my core. Uh, and for the um, kindergarten, it's also the same. Okay, just pretty much the same, except for my kindergartner, I do focus a lot more on reading. My uh, a third grader is very advanced in reading, and so she doesn't need. So what I do is I take my Erin Condren planner. Now I'm going to go through it uh, for a minute, but I just want to focus on what I do first to plan the week. So I go ahead, and I've already planned the first week of August. As you can see, whoa, it's a little bit close, but uh, this is the best I can do. So what I do is I have the same exact subject headings that I have on this form. Let me move back a little bit. Sorry about that. So the exact subjects at the top of this form here, I put it in the top of the Erin Condren Planner. The only thing that I do is language arts is kind of encompasses spelling, reading, phonics, grammar, all of those things because I don't have enough tabs. So what I do is language arts, reading, handwriting, 
math, circle time, and family subjects, okay? So these are um, the, the other two worksheets that you're just at a glance that I have. So all I do is each child gets a different color. So I have purple for my older one and green for my younger one. So what I do is I just take the year at a glance for week one, which just goes this way, and I copy. I literally copy what's in the first week. I copy it here, okay? And I put Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all of the subjects, and it's very easy that I had planned this all in advance, so I don't have to think about what I'm gonna teach my child. It's already there. So I go ahead and I fill it out, okay? Just the core, which is the first four of these here, green and purple. Now it looks a little bit crazy uh, this time, and that's because this was my first homeschool week that I planned. Uh, it, it is going to look neater in other uh, pages, but this was just me trying to test out how to, how to format it. Uh, it's probably gonna be better next time, but this is the best that I can, people. So be patient with me. Uh, then over here, I have all of the morning worksheets they're gonna be doing and then I have each of their core subjects, okay? Then what I do is I take my circle time planner, which is right here. Now for circle time, this is what is also the equivalent to a morning basket. I call it circle time because we just have a ball there and I will show you guys separate video on that, but I do... For circle time, I do seasonal units and read aloud. So when it's fall, we do fall books. When it's Halloween, we do Halloween books. Um, that's on Mondays. Character training and virtue training on Tuesdays. Music composer, we study a music composer and for the first, for the, for the month. So we learn about their life. We do listening activities where we listen to different pieces. Uh, that is so missing these days in music classes at regular school. Um, and uh, I really wanna bring that into my homeschool. What you, what you need to know, so that's on um, Thursdays, we do a general knowledge and I go through uh, the what your kindergartner and what your third grader needs to know from core logic and I did show those books in part one of the video we do our unit study read aloud on Thursday and then on Fridays we do an art picture study where we look at a painting we study it we think about it we talk about what it means what what it's telling us and uh and we also do a uh, artist of the month. And I'm going to be using the Confessions of a Homeschooler for our artist biographies. She has a great curriculum and I will link it in the description box below for art. And then on Fridays, I'm sorry, on Thursdays, we're also gonna be doing US history. And I have divided it into four different aspects. We are going to be doing US presidents. My children are now memorizing the presidents of the United States from one to 45. Uh, we are. Uh, on one, we are on 20 right now, but we're gonna continue that on. And then we're gonna do a close-up of the presidents, uh, one and two, three and four. Each month we're gonna do a close-up where we watch a video, we read a book about the president's life. Then we are doing the American Story 100 Tall Tales, U.S. presidents. Um, we're going to just learn something about their uh, American, the American story from the beginning. And uh, then we will do our Learning Our History digital videos. This is a great series of videos um, that are online. You can also order the DVDs. It's, I think it's called Learn Our History, but I will link it in the description box as well. Um, but it has different videos about American history. Uh, then we are going to be doing on the fourth week geography. So I'm just going to be reading from Charlotte Mason geography. And uh, that's just a wonderful geography curriculum that is story based. Uh, like I said, I have my style of of homeschooling is going to be the classical style with a little bit of Charlotte Mason thrown in. So that's kind of my uh, hodgepodge. And then we have memory work in our circle time. And so this is where we are going to be learning a Bible verse of the month, a poem of the month, and a song, hymn of the month as well. Um, so, so important to have memory work as part of your homeschool. As a attorney that got a PhD, if it wasn't for my good memorization skills, I wouldn't have survived, uh, you know, believe it or not, to be successful in graduate school and my experiences, memorization and having those skills of memorizing things is, is key to success in any kind of graduate program that you do. And so that's why I think it's important too. So I pretty much take all of the stuff for circle time and I just, again, copy it into the circle time column. 
I put it all in there. Now, as I am doing the circle time, there are going to be some books that I need to buy. There are going to be some, you know, videos that I need to put together and make a playlist for. So I will be, I put that in here um, as I go along. So first I put exactly what we're doing. Then in the family subjects, I put what we're doing for family subjects as well. Okay, and that's based on my family subject year at a glance. I just copy the week and put it right there. Then we, al then we also do a Bible saints uh, and Catholic study in the morning for breakfast. That's what we do for breakfast. And so I put what we're going to be doing for the month there. If you want to see the resources I use for the Catholic faith, uh, definitely check out my video on that as well. Then I have here a book list. What books do I need to buy for the week? Or what books do I need to check out from the library? Those are going to go in here. And then here I just kind of put a really cool little quote and uh, something there for uh, just to me to take a note on. Now this looks kind of crazy, but um, if, you know, next week I'm going to definitely make it a little bit, the writing a little bit more neat. So a couple of other things that I do to plan for the month. I do. Um, so on the beginning of my, okay, let me kind of just show you guys what I do here. Uh, because I'm sure y'all want to see it. So my Erin Condren planner, I kind of modified it to fit homeschooling. All right. And so what I did is I have a reading log. So here we're going to log in everything that we're going to be reading throughout our homeschool year. I want to have a reading log. Um, we do read alouds during dinner time. I feel that read alouds during dinner is the best way to keep children sitting in their seats and eating and not talking. Uh, because if they're talking, they're not eating. So we do a lot of good read alouds during during dinner time and so I'm going to put all those there along with what I do at circle time. Then I have my supply list. These are the things that I'm going to need to buy for the school year, just notebooks and such. This is where I'm going to be keeping attendance. So I have these little Erin Condren dot stickers and I'm going to be putting the attendance. Now we are not required in our state to uh, homeschool a certain amount of days, but if you are that uh, if you are required in your state, this is a great way to keep track. This is a monthly spread. Uh, it just has I covered it because it started in January. My homeschool year starts in July. I'm sorry, in August. So I covered it up, and I'm going to be putting the months in there. Okay, this is just left. You know, some homeschool planning that I have for this year. Uh, this is my July spread. Isn't it pretty? I love it. Um, and this is my August here. I put in the Bible verses and the memory work we're going to be doing for the month. Uh, and for each of the weeks, uh, I put in the Bible verses that we're going to be learning and memorizing along with the poems. And I haven't filled this out yet, but this is going to have, you know, any kind of testing I'm going to be doing or anything like that. All right. Then we're going to move on to the beginning of the month. Okay. And I'm just going to show you this because I just flip through it really quickly. So the beginning of the month, I have my um, to do's. So what I'm going to, what I need to do left uh, before the school year starts, any supplies that I need for that specific um, month. If let's say there's a science project that I've got to do that month, I need a certain thing. Like I need two shoe boxes for science. So that's the thing that I need. Uh, books that I need to either check out or purchase and then media. So this is all of the YouTube videos that I need to look up uh, for, um, for YouTube videos, PowerPoints, anything media related. That's what I need to look up for my month. So I kind of do this planning in the month, uh, the month before the week before the month ends. So so that I know exactly what I need to do. Then this is my circle time planner. Okay. My circle time planner is it has all of the subjects that I'm going to be doing during my circle time. So as you see, I do all of these subjects and check them all off in the one hour because I have them on a loop schedule. And so that is just kind of an overview list of what I'm going to be doing during my circle time. And my circle time, like I said, only lasts one hour and I do all of those things. Okay, so that is how I plan the week, the uh, the different weeks in this wonderful book. I'm going to be doing, I've made my to-do lists, I've made my supply lists, all of that stuff. Now I need to get the work into 
my, uh, my kids' hands. So how do I do that? I have created these two beautiful binders that I purchased at Target, and uh, I, they each got to pick their own beautiful pattern. And so what I do is the wonderful crate system that you saw in my first video, that is where this stuff is going to be going in. All right, so what I do is I pull it week by week. So I will take my, um, and let me show you real quick, my crate systems down there. I will take my crate system and I will pull the week one folder and I will get the folder and I will then take each of the sheets that are for Monday. And let me just show you. Whoa, sorry guys, you fell. All right, back, back, back online there. Okay, so what I will do is I will take my week one folder, my hanging folder from my crate system, and I will get the pink one, which is for my younger daughter. And I will open it up, and this has everything she's going to need for the week, all of the worksheets divided um, into what she's going to have. So what I do is I take this worksheets and I put them in the binder, and I'll show you how I do that. So what I do is I have this binder, and these are um, the way that we organize. Oops, and it's, of course, upside down because, you know, it can't be the right way. All right, so here we go. So I open it up here. Okay, let me just take this out real quick. And this is my child's binder. And so what we do is we have a sticker chart system and I tape, I just get like a cute little reward chart from Google free and I print it out. I cut it up and I put it, I paste it right in here. And so what this is, is a reward system. If we get our work done before lunchtime, then we get to put a sticker in the sticker chart. And there's only really about like 25 to 30 little dots. And if they fill all of the dots, which is usually by the end of the month, they get to go to Target and pick something from the dollar spot. This is huge for my children. I mean, these kids, Love it. And so what I do, and this, because my whole goal is I need to be done with homeschooling by lunchtime. I don't want to be homeschooling all day. I don't have the time for it. And um, I am a working mom. So my, you know, my goal is to get it done. And the only way to motivate them is to have some kind of a system in place. And this is what I do. So that is in the first flap. And they know they get their work done by 1230, 1 o'clock. Um, then uh, it's usually 1230, but by the time lunchtime comes around, they get their work done and they are gonna get a sticker. So that motivates them to stay on task and be diligent. All right, so in this uh, binder, I have my daughter's schedule. So she's in third grade and I'm gonna try to make her a lot more independent. She is going to have to follow her schedule and I have that here. Then I have a reading log that she will be logging in on, she just started logging in. Uh, she'd be logging in all of the books she's gonna be reading throughout the year. She does 20 minutes of independent reading on her own every single morning before school starts. Um, I have her uh, kind of trained to do that. Instead of sitting, waiting, waking up and watching TV or getting on screens, she reads for 20 minutes and she puts a little timer and gets it done. So she's gonna be logging that here. Now, I have divided my child's uh, book into four sections. First one is the daily tasks. That is the red. The second one is our circle time. There are certain things that we do at circle time. They're all in there. The third one is going to be for uh, resources, just different resources that she can use. And the fourth one is going to be for family subjects. Family subjects, any worksheets, anything I need to give them is going to be in there for the family subjects that we do. So just to kind of give you an idea now, this is not completely done yet because I'm still planning and, and prepping for homeschool. I should be done by the end of this week. So uh, I just want to kind of give you an idea of what I put in here. So when we do the daily planning, we have a uh, assignment checklist. So there, let me see if I can. Okay, so there I will give her what her assignments will be for the week, okay? And so she can move at whatever pace she wants, but as, as uh, she does all of her work, and again, this is all for summer. We did some summer uh, learning this, this year, so um, it says summer, but I have to change this to the new school year. But just so you get an idea, we put the subjects here, 
okay? And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, on and so on, and then they check off. Um, and then there's always a bonus. So I put a little bonus activity for them. If they finish their work on time and they can do the bonus, they will get two stickers for their sticker chart instead of one, which will get them their prize faster. So again, it motivates them uh, and, and really, you know, they, they, they just love it. I, I love doing that with my kids because it, I find it's just so effective. All right, so here, I have five sheet protectors and each sheet protector will represent one day. So Monday, all of the worksheets will go here. Tuesday, all of the worksheets will go here. Wednesday and so on. So, she, and then I'm also going to be putting little tabs so that uh, it marks the days, but she just pulls out all her Wednesday work, Monday work, and she's ready to go. Okay, then this is our circle time section and our circle time we always start with our pledge of allegiance so we put that there uh we chart our uh, day of the week our month of the year um uh, our day of the year and our year we do our 100th day countdown happy 100 days of school so we're going to be doing that we chart the weather we talk about how we're feeling that day it's really important that we teach our kids to express themselves and talk about their feelings. So we kind of look at these, you know, different emojis, I would say, and they get to circle how they're feeling and they tell me at circle time why it is they're feeling that way. Are they sad? Are they happy? Whatever it is. Then we also chart the weather and these, these are all free. I found these all on the internet. I will link them below if you guys want them. Um, but this is also from uh, JD Alvarez and a couple of other bloggers that I found that have these great worksheets. Uh, JD Alvarez is a YouTuber and she's also amazing. She does a lot of Montessori curriculum type of things. But anyway, this is, uh, they're gonna ch uh, chart the weather for me. Uh, now we never snow because we are in Florida, so uh, that never gets shaded, but it's still fun to look at all of the weather and see throughout the month how, you know, if there was any weather patterns. Then here we have uh, the, the, where I put their memory work. So this is their, um, their song, which we are in the month of July. So we are doing um, Grand Old Flag and we're learning that song. And then A People's Prayer, which is another patriotic uh, poem that we're doing as well. Okay, and then here they have their Bible verses that they have to memorize. So they bring their binder to circle time and they go through it with me together. So then this one will be for our um, either our family subjects or our resources. Uh, and so one or the other, but it doesn't really matter the order. Um, and then here I have for the resources tab, just some resources for them, like little number worksheets, um, you know, little charts and tables for math. Uh, different, you know, kind of things that like an addition table, you know, stuff that she can look at if she needs help uh, with anything uh, while she's doing her work. And I'm going to fill this up and update this as well, but just so you guys have an idea. So once I have filled up the worksheets they need to do, I will then make sure that their boxes, their work boxes have what is needed for them to do their work. I love this. I don't even remember what it's called. Uh, so sorry. Um, but they are found at Michael's. You can also get them on Amazon, but Michael's is a lot cheaper. Um, and so these are little work boxes. And what I love about them is they open, they have all different colors, by the way. Um, and they have a tray, look at this. This is amazing. They have a tray with where they can put all their supplies and then all of their books go in there. So when it's time for learning and homeschool, they just grab their box, they grab their binder and they are ready to go. And what I love about this too, is this could be great for road schooling or if you want to go school at a park or you want to go school you know, at grandma's house or whatever, you just take this and this and you're good to go. You're ready to go. We're homeschooling and we're learning. So that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this series. Please make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will have so many more videos to show you of how I organize things, how I teach um, my kids. And I'm really, really excited to, to share with you all of it. And please, if you have any comments, any suggestions, um, any other videos you want to see, what you want to see more of, please leave a comment 
comment. Please like this video, share with your friends. If you have someone who is considering homeschooling or doesn't know how to get organized, please share this video. And uh, also follow me on Instagram at firewifelawyermom911. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.